Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. This is your quickie episode. We got a lot. We got a lot happening. We got a lot happening right now. Um first off, live show. Live what, show? What was the date? June twenty fourth? Yeah. Um, and registration should be out really, really soon. So just go ahead and mark your calendars, tell all your favorite bloody happy hour friends. And y'all just make a day of it. Come to Waco, check out Chip and Joanna, June 24th, and um, look forward to some Dirty Chad info really, really soon. Caroline, what's in the news? Well, we are currently on verdict watch for Letitia Stauk, who was um, uh-huh. the great admitted mom. to murdering Gannon, her stepson. I was going to say, she was the evil she's stepmom, admitted, right? Yes, she's admitted to it, So, but she's saying that throughout the whole um, trial, she's now saying that she has multiple personalities, and Maria is the one who killed Gannon. Oh. Yeah, not Eduardo. She talked about Eduardo, like that he came in and held him at gunpoint and did this and did that. No, it wasn't Eduardo. It was Maria. Oh, are all her multiple personalities Chicanas? Uh, only one, and one of them speaks Russian. Oh. And one of them apparently writes in Spanish with the opposite hand of, like, or with Right-handed, so she's left-handed, but that one is right-handed. But Did they make her do it? Make, but they cannot find the documents where there's anything written. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so she, um, it's Maria's, it's Maria. And, and Letitia didn't testify. We thought maybe Maria would testify. No. No, none one. of them. None of them testified. Mm-mm. That is the hard, like if I was just going to bullshit, uh, like, play that I was crazy that would not be the route that I would go because that's the hardest one to prove and there's very few I think Billy Milligan may be one of the only cases well that has been proven to have multiple personalities oh is that what what about that movie split Split. was based off of Billy Milligan yeah yeah Mulligan or Milligan whatever his name is so this defense team went and found this lady Dorothy Lewis, who is a renowned psych- psychiatrist, not psychiatrist, she's a psychologist, but she's put stuff in the DSM-5, which is like mm-hmm. the Bible for the psychology, like that's yeah. what they use to, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but she has this documentary on HBO called Crazy Not Insane. And I guess that's how they found this lady they brought her in she's 85 years old she's in a wheelchair her son comes in the courtroom reeking of weed they catch him on camera in the courthouse smoking weed they call him out because there's no smoke i mean all this whole big thing with this dorothy lady she has been late the whole time she is a disaster she's pretending like she didn't get these emailed but she did or it was defense's fault i mean it was a whole disaster so we're just like what is happening at this trial Dorothy? Letitia and her, she was and her to, attorney are like getting all close and laughing and they're smiling and doing like, so wild. was she supposed to help Letitia? Yes, I oh. guess. But I don't understand. Okay. So on they when they went to verdict watch, they've been in verdict watch for four hours on Friday and then they left to go home for the weekend mm-hmm. and they'll, they'll come back. Um, So I don't know why it, I figured they would, say guilty and it would be done like a lot faster Gosh. so there's probably one person holding out yeah but she's she is and it's probably she a step is evil. <laughs> she's evil this person is just evil she did it all she gave him laxatives so that he i don't know it's, it's a whole it's just bad but we're on very watch for that Now, a word from our sponsors. Are you looking for a 
great haircut or shave experience? I need a shave. Come to Champions Salon and Barber, where the skilled barbers and stylists are dedicated to giving you the best service possible. Whether you need a simple haircut or a complete grooming package, they have you covered. And while you're there, you can enjoy a complimentary beer and friendly chat with their staff. How great is that? So they have two convenient locations in Waco and one in Woodway. You can book appointments online or through the app, and you could make it easy to visit. So go to Champion Salon and Barber today and experience a cut above the rest. All right, if you love smoothies or if you love your protein in the morning, you need to get you a Blend Jets. You can do that if you go into blendjets.com. If you enter the code BHH12, you get a discount. And let me tell you, these things are portable. They are easy to use. They can fit in your cup holder. You can have it at home or you can have it in your office like I do. Right this morning, I had my blueberry banana one mm, how was with it? some chia seed. It wasn't chunky or anything? It was very smooth. When I have it in my shaker, it is a little chunky. So this is a great alternative. I love it. Um, It is battery powered. So all you have to do is plug it in every two weeks and the battery never runs down. Oh my gosh. I love battery powered things. Go to Blendjet's and order you a Blendjet and get a discount. Thanks, April, for sharing. Cure hydration. If you are obsessed with your hydration like I am, this may be something good for you. This is something that is so easy. Forget about the Gatorade. That just dehydrates you even more. And if you don't like the taste of coconut water, try Cure Hydration. You can go to my offer link. It is zen, Z-E-N, dot A-I slash B-H-H 20. This is vegan. It's no added sugars. It's just a little packet you could put in your water. Or if you're really smart during happy hour, you could put it into your Tito's. It is just as effective as an IV drip. And it's if you don't not like the taste of water, it's not as boring as water, not as sugary as the sports drink. And if you're an athlete, it'll give you the best performance. Or if you just get brain frog or headaches because you do not stay hydrated brain frog brain fog (laughs) the solution is cure hydration so go to that link enter the code you can go to my offer link it is zen z-e-n dot a-i slash b-h-h 20 cure hydration I'm your puzzle-loving pal, and I'm going to tell you about my latest obsession, Wongo Puzzles. These things are the real deal, folks. They're high-quality, handcrafted, and perfect for anyone who loves a good challenge but doesn't want to dedicate their entire kitchen table to puzzles for a week. Trust me, I've been there. (laughs) And I might still be there. But I got one of these actually for Christmas. I loved it. I did it, and I was so proud of myself. And they have all these cool designs, and you need to go to wongopuzzles.com and use our discount, BHH. You get 10% off, and I really want to know if you'll order one of these puzzles. How would you think about it? Because it's so fun, and I need to order like five. Lori Vallow, that trial's still happening. Um, and the latest there, I mean, there, it, that has not been a, there's not been a dull moment yet in that trial. Um, there's talk about Satan tacos and being put into a box and delivered to Antarctica or something. I mean, it's, it's wild. Mm -mm. It's very, very cultish. It's, it's just a lot of things are coming out. Nas gross text messages between her and. Chad, he's so gross. He looks like a potato. And that's all I have to say about that. It's bad. But it's interesting. These Both of these are going on at the same time. So there's your Court TV Corner. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Then uh, we So by have, the time they hear this, we'll know what Letitia's going to be, I right? I would hope so. Yeah. I would hope so. I would hope so. So most likely the verdict is out, hopefully. Um, then on we have Lauren Heike. She, did you hear about this one? She was attacked in Phoenix on a hiking trail. 
Um, she was 29 years old. She was stabbed 15 times. So on April 28th, she was hiking at Reach 11 Trail west of Scottsdale Road and Mayo Boulevard. So in case anybody out there is listening in the Phoenix or Scottsdale, Arizona area, that's where this happened. Um, at 10.52 on April 28th, surveillance cameras found her walking on a trail alone. And then about 30 seconds later, a man is seen going in the same direction that she was going in. And then later you see somebody, that same guy, like sprinting across the camera, like in the opposite direction. And then they also catch him on camera at 10.55, so about three minutes later, and he's trying to cross a barbed wire fence, trying to escape. Um, and they said, police said that they believe Lauren fought him off because she had defensive wounds on her hand and on her hands and arms, um, and that she was trying to climb over that barbed wire fence, but couldn't get over it because oh. she just suffered so much from all of her injuries. She was stabbed with a pocket knife um, in her back and her chest. So on Friday, yeah, this past Friday, they announced that, that they made an arrest. This guy named Zion Teasley, 22-year-old. Mm -hmm. wow. So he was arrested around, um, on May 4th, he was arrested. Yeah. Then they announced it on that next day, May 5th. So he lives with his mother and he lives about a less than a less than a mile away from where her body was found and at the time of the arrest oh yep i saw him he's a yes, cute boy yes so listen to what he says so <sighs> he told officers he's like there's no freaking way i'm in for a sex crime i haven't been with anyone in a long time and the vet police think that the attack was random that he followed her on the trail and just attacked her for no reason. But they said that during his interview with police, he said that he was struggling with his sexuality and that he feared his soul's salvation due to his thoughts. Like he was in fear for his, uh, his salvation yeah. because of the things he was thinking. Uh, the, Officer showed him a picture of Lauren and he said that he recognized her from the news and that he wanted to look like her. Oh. Is he trying to wear her face? Where did he stab her in the back and where? Back in the chest. Because he getting it from behind in the back, but I, yeah, I believe the back and the chest. Mm. But he stabbed her from behind, so unless he caught up with her and then did it a couple more times. But 15 stabs. Stab wounds. They linked it through DNA on Lauren's shoe. Um, that was his DNA on her shoe and cell phone location data. So they said that at his former workplace, uh, co-workers had said that he was fired for being aggressive towards female employees. <sighs> and they asked if he had planned to do this, like planned to murder her. And he said, I'm definitely not a person who wants to kill another person. If I was going to do something like that, it wouldn't be premeditated. Mm. Okay. But apparently he was in the Marines <coughs> for a bit. Okay. Uh, only are. for about three months. He did not complete his training. But we don't have the details after that due to privacy issues. Um, he appeared in court on Friday. He didn't say anything. They, uh, they said that he would be a potential flight risk because he had already booked a flight to Detroit. So they... Made sure to keep him there. He has been arrested on previous stuff. So he's had burglary, robbery, kidnapping, and disorderly conduct charges. Oh, he, had taken he was escalating. A, he had taken a plea deal because he pled guilty to those charges. He took a plea deal. He got out. He served like 16 months in prison. And then he was released November 2022. Um, they said he was medium to low risk to reoffend again. <laughs> it is a big jump. Big jump. He's being held on one million dollar bond in Mar Maricopa County on first degree murder charges. Gosh. And he also faces a count of probation violations, so he's non bondable. I guess it's not a sex crime though, because they well, say yeah. when you're a 
If you're a gay man. They said there were no signs of sexual. Yeah. I say. If you're a gay man, you usually assault or kill what you're um, attracted to. So that means you would kill other men. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But that's if it's a sex crime. So since this isn't a sex crime, you would go towards. And his past tells us that he does have violence towards women. So is he pissed at women because he doesn't like them? Or, or he wants to be one. Be them? I mean, he was a, he's yes. a good looking boy. He yes. been, he, yes. All he had to do is put on some makeup. He, they were both beautiful people. Yes, yes. If he, they would have made a, and great, she fought like she fought uh, and ran and fought and ran. That is horrible. I know, but you know what's <laughs> even more horrible? This next story I'm going to tell you about. Now, put your FBI hat on because there is a lot of stuff going on here. We're going we're, to Okie. We're going to Oklahoma. Okmulgee. Okmulgee. Okamulgi police. Okay. So you may have heard about this. This is where in Oklahoma, Henrietta, Oklahoma, seven bodies were found. And this just came out last week that they were found on Monday, May 1st uh, on this property and in Henrietta, Oklahoma. Police believe that Jesse McFadden, who is a registered sex offender, used a 9 millimeter handgun to kill his wife, her three children, and two teenagers who had been reported missing. Okay. Um, His wife had purchased the gun in January 2022. McFadden had previously been convicted on first-degree rape charges in November 2003. He was released from prison in October 2020. He was supposed to stand trial... Monday, May 1st, First. because on charges of sol- soliciting sexual conduct with a minor and possession of child porn, because while behind bars, he was caught with a cell phone using it to send nude pictures to minors. Whoa, so, wow. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he was going to trial for that on Monday, mm-hmm. but he never showed up. Okay. Got it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he was out from his first, he got released from his first, from his rape charge, which. uh, However that works. However that works. So police identify all seven victims of, uh, who were found dead. Holly McFadden is 35 and that was his wife. Okay. They had been married for less than a year may 26 will be a year so they have been married for less than a year so she married him since he's been out of jail in 2020 knew what he was married him and brought her daughters into this okay that's what not victim blaming but okay well no yeah yeah so maybe they knew each other in high school mm-hmm. she was shot three times in the head her children these are her children Riley Allen, 17 years old, one gunshot wound to the head. Michael Mayo. Is Riley a girl or boy? I I assumed a girl. Okay. Michael Mayo, 15 years old, two gunshot wounds to the head. Tiffany Guess, 13, two gunshot wounds to the head. Those were all um, Holly's kids. I'm okay. assuming they have all three different daddies because they have all oh, three different, different last names. They are not, McFadden is not the father of those kids. So, then we have the two who we found out about first, which was Brittany Brewer and Ivy Webster. Those are the friends. Okay. Brittany Brewer, 16, Ivy Webster, 14. Why did we find out about them first? The, they had been those reported were just missing? the first, yes. They were reported missing on Sunday, the day before. Okay. We found out, we, the, the, the day before they found the bodies. Uh, I'll, right, uh, yeah. right. Okay. So they both suffered one gu- gunshot wound to the head. They were friends with Tiffany. Tiffany was the 13 year old girl, daughter. They were friends with her. They went over there on Saturday, April 29th, for a sleepover. The girls were then reported missing when they did not come home or they didn't answer their phone. 
and then an Amber Alert was sent out. Mm. And that all happened on Sunday. So Saturday they were seen, they were there, they didn't come home on Sunday. Parents had been calling, figuring out what, where are y'all, where are y'all, no, nothing, heard nothing, Amber Alert. There you go. So Ivy, Brittany, and Riley, they were all found separately. They, those three were found together 150 yards um, apart from the other four. Okay. So there's because there's seven victims, right? Yeah. Um, and it's a big, it's kind of out in the open. It's just a home out in the open. There's a creek, and the other victims were like 500 yards away. And it looked to be that the three, Ivy, Brittany, and Riley, were they were trying to escape. So that's why they were found in a different area than the other four. I guess are the Ivy four, the friends or the kids? I can't remember. Brittany and Ivy are the friends. Okay. All the other ones are the kids. Okay. So whenever I hear one gunshot wound to the head, I assume you're like execution, mm -hmm. right? Like in your yeah. back of the head, front, of, front the, of whatever. The but the police say they would not use the term execution style. I don't know how they came to that. They said they would not use that term to describe the killings. Um, there were no recent calls that had been made out. There was no 911 calls. Nothing had led them out there for anything before. Um, they don't know if he planned it or if there was a motive. There was no note found. Um, and they believed that he murdered the six of them and then shot himself. <sighs> So he also said people in the press conference, they were asking him, what do you think the, like, what do you think happened? Or like, what, and he was like, I don't want to just give a theory because based on the evidence, we don't know. We have no idea what, what the motive was. We have no idea. Now I find this hard to believe based on what I'm about to tell you, because on Friday, which was just this past Friday, yeah. so that, they found the bodies on a Monday. So the Friday before. So then we're, we're, well, they found the bodies on a Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're on Friday. The crime scene has been released just after a few days, okay? The whole house, the house is open. The parents, the family. Who, they can all go in. They can and, all go in. Okay. Okay. So inside this house, they find that the, this was, this was not just any sleepover. Okay. The oh, police uh, released it. So then the, I, I don't remember if it was Brittany's or Ivy's family, one of the families go and they video and they are like filming it all. And it's out there. Like I've watched it several times. It's on the news, it's everything. So they basically take a tour because they're trying to find answers because the police are just like, oh, well, you know, the murder, the guy who did it is dead. And so there's not going to be a trial. So it's fine moving on. But they're like, we want to know why our kids were are dead and what like this isn't case closed. This is case just opened. So this house, inside of this house, it's called the House of Horrors, and it is a house of sex crimes. It is full. The family videoed what they saw, released to the media. In these videos are shackles and chains that were drilled into the floor next to the mattress in one room. Chains were drilled into the floor into the kitchen. Sex toys, handcuffs, drugged candy, so like edibles was out there. On this one table, it had the edibles. They were open. It had a bottle of like 800 milligram ibuprofen. It looked like lines of Coke, which it could have been the ibuprofen was chopped up and then put it. It's obvious. It looks like they had been drugged. Um, drug, drug syringes, needles with still drugs in the syringes. And the police saw all of this and, and just said, done. Yeah. A wedding ring was right next to the needles. So all this stuff is just like there on this one table. Very staged looking along with a dog collar, multiple computers everywhere. And this house is filthy and disgusting and there's like a, a pad that it's almost like one of those mouse pads that's oh pad, i was thinking but of it had like a, a just a bunch of bugs on it on the ground like it was this house was disgusting it was 
plates and dishes all in the sink and just nasty. So ongoing, disgusting. Nasty. Very nasty. So why did the police release this crime scene? Why were these parents, uh, they were the ones, I mean, they went in there in order, they're like, there's something that's got to be here. Okay. They're going in there. What if there's other men involved? What if there's other kids who are missing or women who are missing and their DNA is on the mattress or the drug syringe or anywhere? Nothing. Uh They did nothing. They just left it. And in that press conference, how are you going to say that there's nothing that leads us to believe what the cause was or what the motivation was? Like, obviously, this was a sex dungeon. This is a pedophile situation. So this also leads us to... Did Holly, the wife, know? Yeah. Because how did her house was, how was, it was full of this stuff and you don't know? And then you invite these girls over? Yeah. And I don't, I mean, it doesn't look like any of this stuff was recently set up. It looks like it had been there for a while. Um, The family ends up begging the police to come back so they videotaped all the stuff holly's family or the other kids family? i think it's both of them uh, both of the families okay both of the friend families they they and they have full oh, permission yeah it's um the ivy other, and britney's yeah. family they have permission to go in this house they were like they were not trespassing so they wanted to make sure that, that was known um and so this is a clip of I believe this is Ivy's dad. He's talking to, they finally get an investigator to come in and to take pictures. There's like, you didn't even take pictures because while they're in the house, they end up finding their own daughter's cell phone along with like three other cell phones and they find tablets and they find all kinds of stuff that they're like, there's probably all kinds of videos on these phones and on these computers and these tablets and y'all are just going to leave them here? I don't understand. And then you just wait till you hear the response from this guy. So who are we listening to? Okay, this is going to be the Ivy's dad is talking and then I'll let you know when it's the investigator who's... Okay. And there's another guy in there and he's uh, another part of the family. Why, that, that's what I just don't get. I know you guys are hurting too. I know you guys have a hell of a job to do and you saw you saw my daughter dead, shot in the head and I I know what you're seeing and I know what you went through but a lot of this stuff needs to be taken. You guys have to come back out here and do a whole nother sweep because you mess so much. There's medicine, there's drugs, brand new locks that he put a brand new key and lock on the counter. Why are we not getting receipts and video out of him purchasing the I'm sorry, I'm venting, but I want more done. The problem is, we don't know what else to do. Like, there's a story to be told here. Right. We don't know what happened. Don't know what else to do. I'm going to say this. Since we don't have the only person that can tell us what happened. He's dead. But we can try to piece it together. And I want to say this with all respect to your job and your position. What else y'all could have done as law enforcement, the whole agency, is every bit of this stuff should have been in evidence, including the phones. Y'all didn't search this house. You didn't look. Dude, calm no, down. No, you didn't. You didn't. I didn't look at all. I know what I'm saying. As, 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 not you, people, not you. I'm saying the agencies. This, you got to understand, this was not done right. I, no crime scene taken. We are open to any suggestions you all can I'm saying that suggestions. Their, their job wasn't done. They didn't do their job. It's clear. They didn't do their job, and the whole world's going to know it. It's family. Well, what, what would this accomplish? What would this accomplish? I'm a grieving parent that my daughter got raped and murdered, and you're telling me right now that I don't have a right to know what happened? The story's right here. It's right here. 
and is still sitting here. Still! Ah! It would help us to know that she was drugged and not in pain. Right? She was well, raped. Something the medical examiner is going to I'm going to call Joe when we get back. It would be nice to have her phone if, whenever, and we can have that, if at all possible. Did we take a phone before? Nothing was no, taken nothing out of this was house. taken, but my daughter's is that pink one up there. Okay. I would like to have it if possible, but we don't know if we can just take it. So that's why there we might have to be call. evidence on it. There, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. And can I just look at it to double check that that one's hers? Did they take it a, uh, a two hour online investigation course in I... Oklahoma? Is that how you become? cop i don't is it know. online training modules i think it might be but i cannot get over that this has to be some kind of pedophile ring and the office this is, is not the time to tell me this after all these conspiracies i've been watching <laughs> why would they why would they just why are they trying to like ignore? They're like, oh, it's fine. We found the bodies, and we know who did it. And it, r- let's wrap it up. That's the only what it seems yeah. like the only reason why I would think that they, if they knew that there was a pedophile ring, I would think that they would try to cover it up. Like we're gonna kind, con- like, let's get rid of it, or let's take it all into custody and act like it didn't exist. I think this is ignorance and laziness that they didn't even attempt like i think they saw what happened what concluded not? that it was mcfadden and didn't go it was like case closed done let's go back and drink our cheap light alcohol from oklahoma that didn't even have the right alcohol content no. because yeah um like i think that that is i think it's pure laziness i don't think it's uncover i don't it doesn't seem like it's trying to hide anything because he's in there and he's like, wait, I don't like, they seem like they're ridiculous, like dumb. I, 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 I thought it was like, he's like, lady, I've been, I thought my job I've was been done. here for so many years and I've been in this house many times doing this stuff. So I don't even want to be here and talking to you right now. Yeah. I don't know. Or like we've known what's been going on. Like yes. why are you yes. just finding out? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that's kind of that was my vibe. But I've, I've oh heard okay both, both vibes. So okay. The one that you said and then this yeah one. yeah I can see that too. But um and maybe that's why they were they've held that back is because now you got victims' family and so you don't want to say this woman knew what was going on. We knew what she was doing with the daughter, but. Why haven't you called CPS then if you've known? So you still didn't do your job. Either either way, you have not done your job. Because like whenever the officers go in there and they see these restraints and these uh, chains with locks on the floor and they see all the drugs and they just are like, oh, it's fine. Like no big deal. Is that what? I feel like it. Is Is that normal? No, it's not normal. So that's that's what made me think they're trying to cover something up by not addressing it but i get they would want also want to clean it up and get it out yeah like if, if it's something they knew about if it was a pedophile ring if they knew that the elites were running this pedophile ring and they were paying oh, you know what i mean too. um that's they would cover that up. So we're going to go into that for the Koresh conspiracy episode is that supposedly the government knew. And so they were trying to cover it up. And that's why the whole compound burned down is they were trying to cover up any oh, evidence. evidence. So that's probably why my mind is there is that if they yeah. knew about it, then they would have got rid of everything. <sighs> Later after this, there is an interview with one of the parents <laughs> This is what I don't get. They said that the dad said, one of the dads, Brittany's dad, said that she had, quote, spent weekends with him for about two years. Um, with McFadden. Brittany's 
like the 17. Uh huh. She's wow. like, oh, she spent weekends with, she, he said with him. He didn't say with the daughter. Like the reason that she went over to that house was to have a slumber party with the daughter. But the dad said, oh, she's spent weekends with him for about two years oh. now. And we've met him twice. And we had no idea he was a registered sex offender or about the child pornography uh, allegations. And wow, no. So was he grooming these kids? What, like what was happening? The, the, that's why there's just so much more that's happening here than I think that we know. But this is still pretty new. I mean, it's yeah. So that uh, that's wild. So wild. I've been seeing um, those articles come up, and I hadn't got to read about it. So I'm glad you covered it. I had no idea that it went this deep. I think the moral of the story is, man, don't get killed in a small town because. Dude, it's all these small towns that are popping up and having the worst um, situation. Yeah. Your death may not be investigated. Mm-mm. Definitely won't. Unless it's Moscow. They're doing their job. Oh, there's... Yeah, what's the latest with that? There's a bunch of stuff happening. Well, they just... Re they got video footage released of Brian Koberger from one of his police stops about a month before the murders just to kind of get how he talks and to see. Yeah. I guess that's why that was a big yeah. deal. Um, which it was interesting watching him talk to that officer mm -hmm. acting like he was pretty articulate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Good yep. to go. Good to go. All right. We will see y'all on Thursday for the full episode. We are going to end Koresh for you guys. So it's going to be the end of, your 100th episode series. You're going to get the final chapter and we're going to do some conspiracy talk and it got juicy. It got me paranoid. I was up till like 2.30 last night looking up other conspiracies on TikTok and let me just say never trust anybody. Never trust anyone. Um, don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Bye y'all. Bye. Hi, this is Sarah. And I'm Carter. And this is Some of Our Thoughts. We're two Southern sommeliers, and we want to share everything we love and know about wine. We started hanging out during quarantine and cooking and drinking and listening to music, and we just thought this would be a great way to bring everything we know to you guys. We will make wine knowledge and food pairings easy and approachable. So put on your favorite vinyl, grab your favorite glass of wine, tune into our show, and let's have some fun. Wine, wine and vinyl. vinyl. <laughs> so check us out on RogueMediaNetwork.com or wherever you get your favorite podcast. We'll be talking about a lot. <laughs> this has been a Rogue Media Network. Production.